Hi students, let's begin with the chapter Magnetic Effect of Electric Current. So this is a chapter in which we will learn a lot about magnets and we will also learn how electric current can produce magnets and also how magnets affect the flow of electric current. The first section that we'll talk about in this chapter is magnetic field and field lines. You see before we go deeper and before we understand the magnetic effects of electric current, we first need to understand what a magnet is in the first place and what forces a magnet exerts on its surroundings. So let's start off with the first section, magnetic field and field lines. Now first of all, let us understand what a bar magnet is. I am sure you must have seen a bar magnet in your laboratory or you must have heard of it in lower classes. A bar magnet is simply a bar shaped substance that attracts iron pieces to itself. It has two poles or two ends, the north pole and the south pole. Now why are the two ends of a bar magnet called the north pole and the south pole? That is simply because when you hang a bar magnet freely, you know, when you suspend it from a thread, then it assumes such a direction that the north pole of the bar magnet points approximately towards the north pole of the earth and the south pole of the bar magnet points approximately towards the south pole of the earth and this happens automatically. You can even try it with a bar magnet at home or in the laboratory. Take a bar magnet, suspend it from a string and you'll see that one end of the bar magnet points north and one end points approximately south. That is why the poles of a bar magnet are called the North Pole and the South Pole. Understood? So that's about a simple bar magnet. Another simple term we need to learn about is the compass. A magnetic compass is simply a bar magnet that is placed in a circular environment like this. You can see that the shape of this bar magnet has been modified so that it looks a bit like this as shown in your figure. The red end is the north pole and the blue end is the south pole. Of course, the purpose of a compass needle is simple. It tells us the direction of the north pole and the south pole, isn't it? We'll be using a compass often in our discussion related to magnetism. The next term we need to study about is magnetic field. Now you already know that when an iron nail is placed near a bar magnet, the iron nail sticks to the bar magnet. So you can say that a bar magnet has a certain impact or a certain influence on the area around it, isn't it? The influence of a magnet, the effect that it has on iron particles near it is called the magnetic field of the bar magnet or the magnetic field of any magnet. Understood? So basically if a magnet is strong, its influence is high, it will easily attract a lot of iron pieces and therefore its magnetic field will also be large. Similarly, you can also say that near a bar magnet, the magnetic field is large but as you go away from a bar magnet, the magnetic field decreases, isn't it? So the influence of a bar magnet is its magnetic field. The stronger the magnetic field, the stronger the force of attraction on the nail. So the magnetic field is just a term that we have defined to understand the influence of a bar magnet. That's it. Here's how we can define the magnetic field. Magnetic field is the influence exerted by the magnet on its surroundings. It represents the force exerted by the magnet on iron objects near the magnet. So that's simple enough. Now we come to a deeper concept. Magnetic field lines. You see, magnetic field denotes the influence of a bar magnet, but how do we measure it or how do we visually represent it? Magnetic field lines are certain lines that have been invented by scientists to help us look at magnetic field, you know, on a piece of paper. So these black lines you see on your screen are the magnetic field lines of a bar magnet. What do they basically represent? They tell us the direction of magnetic force at any point. Scientists say that magnetic field lines, these lines, start at the north pole of every magnet and end at the south pole of every magnet, like this. So here you can see these orange arrows which tell you the direction of the magnetic force at any point. 
so if you place an iron nail here near this orange arrow the magnetic force on it will be along this arrow along the direction of the magnetic field lines the magnetic field lines tell us that if you place any iron object at that particular point then they tell us the direction of the force on that iron object at that particular point understood so if you place an object here the direction of the magnetic force on it will be like this so don't get confused by the fact that these seem to be weird lines they have just been invented by scientists to help visualize magnetic field for example they as i just said they indicate the direction of the magnetic field then they have some other properties magnetic field lines are closed loops so they are always in loops understood take a look at this magnetic field line it's starting from the north pole it's going towards the south pole but then inside the magnet it is coming from the south pole to the north pole in fact it's another standard fact that the direction of magnetic field lines inside the magnet is from south to north the opposite of the direction of magnetic field lines outside the magnet again all of these magnetic field lines are closed loops these magnetic field lines at the edges seem to be open loops but they are also closed loops they are just two large loops they are just very large loops so they don't fit on our computer screen another important property of magnetic field lines is that the closer two magnetic field lines are to each other the stronger the magnetic field in that region so if there is a very strong magnetic field in a particular region then there will be a lot of magnetic field lines in that region if you go far away from a magnet you will see hardly any magnetic field lines there will be one magnetic field line here and one magnetic field line after a great distance that's because the magnetic field far away from a magnet is very less on the other hand the magnetic field lines are densest near the north pole and the south pole of a bar magnet that is because the magnetic field near the north pole and the south pole of a bar magnet is very strong you can see here that there are a large number of field lines here so the number of field lines the density of field lines also tells us about the magnetic field understood so these are some interesting properties of magnetic field lines of course you learn more about them in higher classes now can we practically see magnetic field lines or are these only in the imagination of scientists let's perform some experiments to understand magnetic field and magnetic field lines better you can perform this experiment in the laboratory